What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the object snapping settings that you can find inside of Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the snapping system in Rhino can be very helpful for helping you draw things to different scales or align different objects with different things, other things like that. So especially if you come from like the world of SketchUp, which is kind of where I started, um, it's something that you're really used to having and it's something that I find to be especially helpful. And so what we wanna do is let's talk about the different ways that we can snap two different things in Rhino. And so in general, there's a couple different ways that you're gonna control your snapping. So you've got these different uh, tabs at the bottom of the page. And what those are going to do is those are going to allow you to click on them in order to toggle different kinds of snapping. So for example, notice how when I click on these, right, these are going to turn gray or not gray. So when they're gray, it means they're enabled. When they're not gray, it means that they're not. So that's gonna be one way that you're gonna to toggle snapping. The other kind of snapping that you're gonna be able to do is when you toggle this O snap on, this object snap, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to set different kinds of snapping and inferencing, which we'll talk about in a second. But first off, let's talk about the grid snap. So what the grid snap is going to do is when that is toggled on, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to toggle snapping to the different things in your grid inside of Rhino. So for example, right now, notice how my mouse cursor is kind of jumping to the different intersection points in here as I mouse over them. And what that means is that means when I click on this point and then move my mouse, notice how this is automatically jumping to those. And so you can use that in order to model two specific increments. So for example, if you look at these values down here, notice how every one of these is basically one foot. Right? So if I was to click right here, that's going to draw a five foot long line. If I was to do it again and do it to maybe like this point right here, that would draw a three foot long line. So you can use this grid in order to snap to different lengths. Now notice how you can right click on this and you can turn that on and off. So you can also toggle both in your active viewport and your all viewports if you wanna show your grid lines or not. So for example, if I was to click into my perspective view, right click and I was to turn off the show grid lines, notice how my grid lines are no longer gonna show up in my 3D view right here. So the other thing that we can do is we can go into our settings. And so notice how this is gonna give us the ability to adjust the number of grid lines as well as the spacing, right? So the minor grid lines are going to be these lighter grid lines that are in here. The major lines are going to be every, are gonna be these darker grid lines right here, right? So right now our minor grid line spacing is at one foot and our major grid lines are every 10 feet. So you can know that each one of these boxes is 10 feet wide. Now you can adjust this. So for example, let's say that we wanted this to be half a foot. We could adjust this so that our minor grid lines are every six inches. And what that's gonna do is that means that instead of having a major grid line every 10 feet, it's gonna be every five feet. So you can adjust the spacing in here depending on the level of precision that you need. So in addition, so that is going to allow you to snap to your grid. The next option is going to set your ortho grid snap. And so for your ortho, what that's gonna do is that's going to lock your lines or your objects to a certain number of degrees, right? So notice how right now with this ortho grid snap on, if I move my mouse around, this is jumping and it's only allowing me to draw at 90 degrees, right? So if I draw a line right here, notice how it draws it straight along this axis. Well, what you can do is you can use your ortho grid snap in order to set your ortho angle. And so if you right click on this, notice how there's an option in here to set your ortho angle. So ortho originally had me at, 40, or at 90 degrees. However, if I click on this right here, notice how it's gonna ask me to set a value. So what you could do is you could set this to any value that you want. So for example, let's say we wanted this to be every 35 degrees. We just type in 35 and hit the enter key. Well now, if we draw a line in here like this, notice how this is going to snap to 35 degree increments right here. So you can set this in order to adjust that ortho um, angle really quickly like this. And then you can toggle that on and off in order to do that locking. And so one other thing about the ortho that you might find valuable is in addition, let's say that I was drawing a line with the ortho off. 
right? So let's say I started a line like this. Notice how this is gonna let me put that in any direction. However, if you hold the shift key, notice how that ortho snap is going to toggle on, right? So you can't tap it to keep it on, but you can hold it and it's going to toggle that on and off. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to quickly lock to those ortho directions, um, even if you don't have that snapping turned on. So let's say I wanted to draw something in this direction. I can just hold the shift key in order to do that. All right, so now let's jump forward to the object snapping right here. So notice how we have the ability to snap to different things having to do with our objects right here. So for example, what we can do is we can turn object snapping on, O snapping, and what that's gonna do is that's going to use these boxes that we've checked over here in order to be able to, um, it's gonna give us the ability to actually be able to inference to different things inside of our 3D space, um, depending on what we have selected. So for example, let's say that we were to activate the line tool again right now. So let's say we wanted to add a single line. Well, notice how at the moment, depending on what I have checked, I'm gonna get different things that show up when I mouse over different things. So for example, the first one is the end point. What that's going to do is notice how that's going to snap my mouse cursor to an object inside of Rhino. So for example, if I was to mouse over this corner right here, notice how this is gonna jump to the corner and let me know that that's an end point. So if we check the box for point, so let's say I was to add a point inside my 3D space like this, so just a simple point. Well, if we have the point button checked, then this is going to inference to that. So notice how if I mouse over that, that's going to inference to the point. If I uncheck the box for point, notice how it's going to give me the intersection right here, but it's not actually inferencing to it just because it's a point. And so I'm gonna to toggle off smart track for a second, but notice how when I toggle off smart track, notice how that's not going to inference to that point unless I check the box for point right here. So midpoint, is going to inference to the middle of a line. So if I needed to draw something to the middle of a line like this, notice how I can just mouse over it with that tool active and I'm gonna get that inference right there. So you can use that to find the middle of lines. Center object is going to find the center of things like circles or squares. So for example, if I mouse over this object right now, Right. Notice how if I leave my mouse over it for a second and then click on it, it's going to find that central point. So if I'm trying to draw a line, right? notice how with central point on, what that's going to do is that's going to inference to that actual center point. So if I click, even if I'm clicking on the outside, it's going to draw the line from the middle. So same thing, if I mouse over this square right here or this rectangle, notice how it's going to find that central point and that's where it's going to draw from. So you can find that, use that to find the center of different objects. So the intersection is going to find the point at which objects intersect. So notice how now, if I have two lines right here that intersect with each other, if I mouse over this, it's going to find the intersection on this point right here and it's going to inference to it. So I can use that in order to find that central point really quickly. So let's say I was to draw a line across here and this now intersects with this object right here. Notice how I'm gonna get an intersection inference point right there. All right, so near is going to basically snap to any object that's near your cursor location. So notice how I can use this in order to find any point in like a curved line or a straight line or anything like that. Anything your mouse is close to, it's going to find that. And if there's nothing else to inference to, it'll just inference to your object or snap to your object and um, show you the little near icon right here. So perpendicular is going to snap um, to a perpendicular to a point that's perpendicular to an edge. Um, this one's a little bit strange in the sense that it doesn't work on the first click that you have. What it's going to do instead is you need to set a single point like this. Well, notice how then when I mouse over this, this will find a point that intersects on this line that's going to be perpendicular. So you can use this to find perpendicular snapping inside of your models. Tangent is going to be similar. What that's going to do is, um, let's say I had like a control point curve or something like this, right? You can't do the tangent on the first point of anything, but if I have a control point curve, right, and I find like this point of this curve right here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna um, snap you to the tangent of that curve. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a smooth intersection between this curve and the point that you're setting right here. So you can use that in order to find smoother curves um, in your models. Quadrant 
is going to find um, the point on a curve that's the maximum X or Y point um, on your construction plane. So notice how here, for example, if I mouse over this curve, it's gonna find me the maximum point on this curve in this direction. So notice how for both of these, right, when I have quad turned on, it's finding the point that's moved the furthest over. So if you need to inference to that or snap to that, this tool is going to do that. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the not function do, does. I think that we're defining a knot as an intersection on a curve because anywhere where my curves have intersected here, um, at least on this curve, um, is being defined as a knot and it's snapping to it. Now this curve right here in the intersection is not defining it as a knot. So I'm not 100% sure what the difference is. This probably isn't something that I would use a ton of unless I needed to draw complex uh, curves anyway, but it is a function that's in here. Um, then vertex. Um, so vertex should be really anywhere there's a vertex on a 3D shape. So let's say for example that we were to draw a cone in here. So we'll just draw the base of a cone right here and then we'll draw it up. All right, and then the vertex is going to snap to a vertex on a mesh. So let's say for example that we were to take this cone and make it into a mesh using the mesh function. So we're just going to go with lower polygons right here. I'm gonna click on okay. Notice how what that does is that basically creates a polygon in here as a mesh. Well, what that means is that means that now it has a number of different points in here in 3D space that this is now going to inference to. So notice how these are defined as vertices or vertexes, um, it's said vertices but um, this is now going to snap to those if you have objects that have been converted to meshes. Now notice how for these like live objects like the sphere in here, it's not considering that a mesh, so it's not snapping to any of those, but if you do have meshes in here, you can use this in order to inference to that. So there's a couple quick tips that can help you with this. So one thing that you can do is, let's say that you have only one kind of snapping that you want. Well, what you can do is you can right click on that and notice how that's going to disable everything that isn't the box that you selected. So so let's say you only wanted endpoints, you could right click on this and notice how it's gonna turn the rest of these off. Uh, if I toggle that the other way, then it's gonna to toggle them all back on. So if I put these all on, right? And then I right click on this, notice how it's gonna to toggle them all off. I can right click on it again in order to turn them back on. In addition, you can also disable you're snapping all together by clicking on this button right here. Um, I'm not sure how that's different than just clicking on this button right here, but you can disable the snapping doing that. And then one other thing is, let's say that you were trying to draw like a complex curve through here, right? And this keeps inferencing to these points and you don't want that. Well, what you could do is you can hold the Alt key in order to temporarily disable that snapping. So notice how when I hold the Alt key, and I'm gonna drag this down a little bit, notice how if I hold Alt, it's going to turn that snapping off, and it's not going to snap to those points as long as I have the Alt key selected. So you can hold down Alt in order to temporarily toggle your snapping off so that you can draw through an area without the snapping affecting the way that your um, objects snap. So if you have any other questions about snapping, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.